This is the 2015 Corolla LE. And on the left we have the 2015 Nissan Sentra. The Corolla and the Sentra compete in the same class. Both have a base price of approximately $18,000. Both of these test cars are well equipped for under $24,000. Both have a small four-cylinder engine rated at 130 horsepower. And while they both come with a six-speed manual transmission, these were both equipped with a CVT automatic gearbox. And in all fairness, we're going to test these in alphabetical order. So we're going to start with the Nissan. Besides, I like that cool blue paint job here. Now under the hood we have a 130 horsepower divided in 1.8 liter 4 cylinder engine. If you get the 6 speed manual transmission on the base car it's rated at 27 miles per gallon in the city and 36 on the highway. The CVT automatic we have is rated at 29 to 39 mpg. Of course in the real world figures can often change so we're going to rack up some miles and see what the real gas mileage is. Now there's no head turning styling here. But on the positive side, the basic shape does resemble the more expensive Nissan Altima and Nissan Maxima models. You have to take a close look to tell the difference. So that's definitely a good selling point. And since we're looking, we'll give you a view from the rear. Now in spite of being a small car, this does have a huge trunk. And the seats fold down for more cargo capacity. And we get a real spare tire underneath instead of one of those cheap inflator kits. Thank you. And here's a view of the cabin from the rear seat and there's plenty of room in the second row by the way. The interior materials are nothing fancy but quite sturdy. Workmanship is excellent. Considering the price I'm not going to complain. A decent gauge cluster. Climate control doesn't get much simpler than this. A couple knobs, a few buttons. The way it should be. I don't really see the need for a navigation system on a car in this class, but hey, it's only $720, which is a good deal. Makes me wonder why the higher grade cars charge $4,000. The very large glove box. It's a good thing because there's not much room in the storage console. Enough for a wallet and a cell phone. And the usual cup holders. These sun visors don't slide, but we do have a sun blocker here, which helps. Here's my only complaint. The rocker panels under the door are way too wide. You're going to be rubbing your leg on the outside of this quite often when you get out. And there's this large shelf on the outside that collects dirt. This just came out of the car wash. Two hours later, it's filthy. Which means it's going to make your pants filthy. Still can't understand why automakers do this. It's totally unnecessary. Now the base price of a Sentra runs around 18000 This SR model with the CVT automatic is 19910 with options like carpeted floor mats, leather seating, auto dimming mirror, premium audio system, navigation, came to $23,885. Not bad really, plus Nissan discounts a lot. If you're looking for a hot rod from a stoplight, you're not going to get it with this engine transmission combination. Lots of noise, but not much go. If you're in a hurry, consider the six-speed manual gearbox over this automatic. At least it has a nice ride over these rough railroad tracks. Heard it, but didn't feel it. The 
think I could run faster than this. Nice brakes though, firm and responsive the way it should be. Quick steering too. Corneability is adequate, but that's all you can say. This is not a race car at all. By the way, there is a button here for the eco mode, which I have no intention of using. This car is slow enough as it is. Uh, no, thank you. I think for city driving, I'll be more interested in this sport button which this vehicle and engine combination sorely need. We're going to take a moment out from our daytime driving and test out these headlights at night. Here we have the low beams at a distance of 100 feet more than adequate. High beams again more than adequate. And on the left we can see some poor guy got his car stolen and stripped the other night. I don't think he's going to want it back. Shame. Hmm, looks like a Nissan Sentra. Yep, sure is. Hmm, tires look good. But I don't think this engine is going to be doing anyone any good. Mm, what a mess. Still smoldering. And to think this happened in back of a church. Some people just have no taste. Alright, getting back to the business at hand. 300 feet with the brights on. Excellent light. Low beam falls off after 120 feet. Adequate for city driving, but on backcountry roads, you want to keep the brights on. Now, the most important part of this test are the fuel economy real-world numbers. But before I tell you that, it's been my experience that on the freeway, CVTs perform just as good as the manual transmission cars. But in heavy city traffic, they don't do as well. More often than not, at least with a small engine like this, the six-speed manual performs better than any CVT. That's not engraved in stone, but often that's the case. And yes, I reset the trip computer for each driving condition, so no emails asking me about that, please. By the way, these fuel economy numbers were done driving in the normal mode. There was one day I did use the sport mode, found the performance in city to be much better, and I lost about 5% on the fuel economy with that. We didn't get much time to use the eco mode because that only works in the city and most of my driving the last couple days was on the freeway. But my experience has shown eco mode doesn't really make much of a difference in any car. Not for fuel economy anyway. Now just a note about the gas mileage. I don't know this for a fact, I have not been able to confirm it, but I was told by those in the industry that the CVT automatic gearbox used in the Sentra is also sold to Toyota to use in their Corolla. Which would make sense because gearboxes often get swapped between different car brands. Now in the Toyota Corolla, the fuel economy rating is 30 MPG in the city and 40 on the highway. Now the question is, are we going to get mileage like that? Or is it going to be similar to what we got in the Sentra? We're going to find out because we're switching over to the Corolla test right now. We've been driving the Corolla in the daytime, now we'll go for a night spin to see how these headlights work. From a distance of 100 feet, the low beams put out lots of light, but a little bit too low for my taste. Wow, high beams are excellent, plenty of light here. From a long distance of 300 feet, the high beams light up the building in the background quite well. Low beams, again, short cutoff, but more than adequate for city driving. This is the 2015 Corolla LE. Now this vehicle comes in four basic models. We have the L model, 
which comes with either a six-speed manual transmission or rather obsolete four-speed automatic. Then we have this LE, which comes with a CVT automatic transmission for maximum fuel economy. There's also an S sporty model. I suggest you pass on that. Trying to make a sports car out of a Corolla is sort of a lost cause. And somewhere on the inventory list, there's something called the LE Eco model, which puts out more horsepower under the hood with supposedly better fuel economy, but that's a separate vehicle, different video. For now, we're just concentrating on the L and LE. Under the hood is a 1.8 liter four-cylinder engine putting out 132 horsepower. If you get the six-speed manual transmission in the L series, it's 28 to 37 MPG rated. If you get that old-fashioned four-speed automatic, it drops to 27 to 36. And on this particular CVT, we're expected 30 to 40 MPG. Well, we'll see. Now on 60 miles of driving, about 80% city, 20% on the expressway, I'm getting 23.5 MPG in the real world. A lot less than the 30 advertised, so we're going to be watching this real close. Now if you're looking for a hot rod that does 0 to 60 in like 4 seconds, you're driving the wrong car here. Many of the other Japanese and Korean cars in this class are much quicker. But then again, the typical Corolla buyer isn't interested in how fast it goes, more in economy and reliability. But just because we have it, a lot of droning from that CVT automatic. Not the fastest around, but it will do. Nice brakes, by the way. The ride is reasonably comfortable even when going over railroad tracks. Which is why I tell you to avoid the sport suspension and other sport type packages on this car. It's just going to ruin the ride without doing anything to really improve performance. Cornering ability is more than adequate as long as you realize this is not a sports car. Steering feel is okay as well. For daily commuting, it will do. This is a view of the cabin from the rear seat. A rear seat which has more than adequate room, I might add. There's nothing fancy about the materials here, but they're sturdy enough. And there are no flaws in the workmanship. The gauge cluster is large, easy to read. Very simple to use climate controls. Same with the audio system, although it would be nice if the buttons were a little bit bigger. Glove box has plenty of room. Storage console does not, but more than adequate for a cell phone or wallet. And for all you environmentalist conscious people, we have the eco mode in an attempt to save fuel, as if this car needs to be any slower. No thanks, you can have it. Now like any brand of a car, there's always a few disgruntled owners out there complaining they're not getting the gas mileage they were promised on the window sticker. And I've noticed a few Corolla owners bitching about this on some websites. But that's why we're here. We're going to take this vehicle out tomorrow on a nice 300 mile highway trip and see what type of gas mileage we can get off of it. So stay tuned. Okay, we're starting our freeway trip. Check the gas mileage at 0, 0.0. Now in a V8, V6, or small four-cylinder engine with turbo power, the automatic transmission will usually outperform a manual gearbox. However, on small little four-cylinder engines, as we have here in the Corolla, it's been my experience they perform far better with a manual gearbox than an automatic, whether it's a conventional automatic or a CDT. I'm guessing in the real world, and again I'm guessing at this point, we're going to see gas mileage around 34 to 35 mpg with this CDT engine combination. Well, we'll see if we're correct as we check in. 
180 miles on freeway trip, 33.1 mpg. The Corolla is an excellent highway cruiser. There isn't much passing power with this engine, but the wind noise is relatively low. The seats and suspension are comfortable. No complaints to look at, really. Okay, complete highway trip, 221.6 miles. 34.0 mpg. As I told you in the beginning of this video, that's what I estimated we would get. Hey, I was right. How about that? No, I did not use the eco button, so I know I'm going to get some hate mail from people telling me you didn't use the eco button. So you know what? On the trip back, just for you, I am going to press the eco button and see if it makes any difference. Thought I'd stop at Toyota for a while and visit the swing town here. The Mini Mart in nothing. I don't think they've opened yet. I hope you viewers appreciate all the rough trips I have to take just to show you the gas mileage on a car. All that gas and driving and staying at these resorts. It's a hard life, but someone has to do it. These panorama rooms are first class. Great view, but if you don't like heights, you don't want to be staying in here. So here's my question of the day. How did that 10 ton rock get on top of there? Okay, we're back from our trip. Let's check the mileage and see what we got. Okay, 220 miles there. Approximately 220 back for a total of 445 miles. 33.9. Actually, it said 34.0 a minute ago, but I had to drive down the street and lost a point. So actually, it's 34.2 and 34 back. No difference. Since the eco mode didn't make any difference on the freeway, I'm assuming it works better in city driving. Now the 2014 model Corolla I drove last year with the same engine and same transmission got 36 on the highway, which isn't that far off from the 34 we're getting here. On the other hand, the 2014 model got over 30 miles per gallon in the city compared to 23 for this, so perhaps you need to use the eco mode more often on this particular model. Which reinforces my theory and much experience that if you want the maximum fuel economy in hard city driving, order a vehicle with a six-speed manual transmission rather than a CVT. Either that, you better plan on leaving the CVT in the eco mode all the time. Your choice. And keep in mind, the 23 MPG in mixed commuting and 34 on the highway is pretty close to what we got on the Sentra which was 36 on the highway and 23 in mixed city dragging. If you're looking for a maximum fuel economy, it's been my experience on these that the six-speed manual gives the best performance and economy. So if that's what you're looking for, I suggest you check that model out over the automatic. In regards to the transmission you get, one feature of the Corolla that can't be denied is they're one of the most reliable cars on the planet. They seem to run forever. And that's what you're paying for. And to get a car like that in the eighteen dollars to $20,000 bracket is a pretty good deal indeed. If you want Toyota reliability but want something a little bit bigger, we have the Toyota Camry video. And here's the link for that.